I am damn sure, is a story you must have heard about how a big elephant, despite having the strength to break free from a small rope, doesn't do so. This is because when it was a small child, it was tied with iron chains. It never tried to break the iron chains, and gradually, its mind accepted that it couldn't break free, it became a mental block. Later, when the elephant grew up, the iron chains were removed, and a normal rope was tied instead. But the mental block remained, and the elephant never tried to break free from the small rope. This happens with us too. It's believed that where there's a problem, there's a solution too. Just like a lock without a key is useless, similarly, in the book, Benjamin and Rosamund Gender, written by husband-wife duo Benjamin and Rosamund Stone, two different approaches are combined. Benjamin is an orchestra conductor in Boston who excels at motivating people to achieve more in life. He understands well what can motivate someone and inspires them to take action using his knowledge. On the other hand, Rosamund is a family therapist whose job is to listen to what people want in life and why they're unable to achieve it. After listening to and understanding their desires, she helps them draw a framework where everything is possible. Each chapter of this summary will tell you how to create a better life. The things you learn from it will help improve you personally and professionally. You'll learn to overcome your limitations and achieve everything that once seemed impossible. So let's begin this meaningful learning journey. The perspective of seeing this inverted world is different for everyone, and it's not because of different values or personalities but depends on how your brain perceives this world. We experience selective information first through our brains, which choose what to focus on despite the plethora of things in the world. Not everything grabs our attention. What may interest some may bore others. After receiving this selective information, the brain creates a personal simulation based on assumptions, meaning accepting something as true without any evidence. This assumption is usually controlled by past experiences. Two different people can derive different results from looking at the same thing. For example, suppose a shoe factory sends its two marketing agents to a region in Africa to study whether there's a scope for business there. The first agent sends a telegram saying there's no scope because nobody wears shoes there. The second writes that there are good chances because nobody has shoes there. Both looked at the same situation from different perspectives. This proves that what we hear is true from someone's perspective. Nothing is objective and everything is based on assumption. Human eyes are also selective. We think we notice everything in the world, but in reality, we only see what's familiar to us. Richard Gregory, a British neuroscientist, explained that we don't receive the objective picture of the world through our senses but only see what our brains are already familiar with. Einstein also admitted in 1926 that scientific theory is not based on observation but helps us observe the world. If the brain doesn't have an existing theory, it won't be able to notice so many details around us. That's why we see the world as we do, unable to use expressions because we only see what our brains have already mapped and categorized. The human brain also presents the world as stories. Your mind connects different events to create different stories. When we dream, our brain usually connects experiences we have had while awake, creating narratives that we tell ourselves. When we are awake, we create stories to explain why we behave in certain ways or why certain things happen. Our brain often uses cause and effect relationships to connect events between stories. These stories don't always reveal the real reasons behind our actions, they are mostly our guesses or assumptions. The term, it's all invented points to our brain's ability to create a map of the world by connecting events and categorizing them, which is unique and personal to each individual. To become more creative, we need to broaden our perspective on this world by expanding our frames of reference. If we can't fix a problem, we should keep trying to solve it, which means the solution lies beyond our mind's capacity to understand this world. Some people say that everything has already been invented, but it depends on how much you know about the world. The more you know, the more you can create. By noticing the stories we tell ourselves, we can break free from the box limiting our abilities. You can write an alternative script that opens up more possibilities. Stepping into a universe of possibilities means understanding that everything has already been invented, empowering you to create results by expanding your perspective. Changing your perspective allows you to find the solutions you seek. You live in a world of unlimited possibilities where you can create anything you want. No obstacle can stop you because you are connected to life itself. Many times, we experience moments that make us feel connected to this world. In those moments, we forget our struggles and the need to survive, feeling powerful instead. You can enter a generous universe filled with possibilities where happiness, creativity, and passion abound. You can improve your business, your life, and your relationships with unlimited ideas. 
Nothing can hold you back because you are connected to life, not to the things you possess. Every day, we try to solve the problems we face, but we often view our lives as a series of limitations that need to be overcome. Instead of focusing on limitations, imagine living in a world where everything is possible. If you're not worried about resources running out or missed opportunities, you can live in a world where everything is available. This universe would be filled with happiness, creativity, and passion. By being generous and interacting with more people, you can attract more customers and improve your relationships. If you focus only on numbers or survival in the competitive market, you'll never achieve success. To be successful, you must overcome your fears and enter a world of possibilities. Take risks and try new ideas. When you live in a world of limitations, you set goals for yourself and strive to achieve them. Your entire life is spent trying to control everything because you want to be in control. While in the world of possibility, you set a goal and help life achieve it. In the world of management, you need to think. Observe your behavior and see what limitations you have set around yourself. These limitations might stem from habits or anxieties about comparing yourself to others. When you notice what your limitations are, you'll find it amusing because you've already taken your first step into the world of possibility. Next time someone asks how you are, you'll say, I'm perfect, because no one can hinder your path now. It's the next chapter in being a contribution. We encounter obstacles step by step. Some people focus on problems rather than enjoying the journey to success. They make a list of things limiting their potential to reach their goals. Then they try to eliminate each obstacle one by one. They live in the world of management, solely focusing on how much time it takes to find resources and overcome their limitations. But others think differently. They don't focus on past failures or future success. In their view, life isn't a battle that must be fought tooth and nail. They only look at how they can contribute to making the world a better place. They enjoy their journey, staying happy and satisfied as long as they make a little difference. There's a story of a man watching a woman dancing on the beach, throwing starfish back into the water with each step. The man noticed an abundance of starfish on the beach. He laughed, saying she was wasting her effort because there were too many starfish and she couldn't save them all. But the woman was happy. She replied that she would save as many starfish as she could. In this example, we see that the man only saw obstacles. He saw so many starfish that he gave up hope of saving them all because he noticed his limitations. On the other hand, the woman knew there were too many starfish, but she didn't let that stop her from making a contribution. She kept trying to save as many starfish as possible. When we think of life as a game, everything changes. Every game has its limitations, and it's part of the challenge. Just like Scrabble challenges players to create words found in the dictionary that earn the most winning points. Thinking of life as a game and a field filled with challenges helps us see beyond our limitations and find help in thriving. We don't focus on merely surviving but enjoy contributing to life. For example, if you divide your professional life into different games, you'll benefit in two ways. First, you'll see every problem as an opportunity, giving you a chance to grow. Second, you'll realize that you can contribute to the game you enjoy. You can even create your own game, opening the doors to possibilities and innovation. To contribute to your own and others' lives, you must first commit to it. Second, you need the courage to evolve and set a goal to bring about change. You also have to accept that sometimes you won't understand the limitations of a game but still play it. In this book, Roseman Zander once worked with a couple facing financial problems, Robert and Mariano. They were teachers with two children, one in college and one in high school. At the end of the year, the couple struggled with filing their taxes. Ryan's mother had money, so at the end of the year, she would go to her mother and ask for financial help. Every year, Mariano's mother gave her a lecture about not knowing how to plan finances properly, so at the end of the year, she struggled. Because of this, Mariano didn't want to go to her mother's, but she had no other option. Roseman suggested that Mariano should play the bush game. After eating peanuts, Mariano told Rosemond a large amount. Rosemond suggested that next time she meets her mother, she should ask for as much money as she just told him. Maria convinced her mother that by giving her this money, she would be able to contribute to her daughter's happiness. If Mariano is happy, the relationship between mother and daughter will also improve. In this way, both of them will benefit from this contribution game. Next time when Rosam and Mariano were seen, she told him that her mother happily gave her the money. Along with that, she gifted equal amounts to her other daughters. By playing the contribution game, Ryan helped improve his and his sister's lives. When you contribute or inspire others, you also improve the lives of many others along with your own. 
shift your thinking away from your own needs to becoming a part of society. Who knows, by helping others, you and your loved ones might also open the doors to the world of possibilities. In the film, Babe, there's a scene on Christmas Day where a duck, pig, cow, and some chickens sit near the window watching who their owner will kill and eat. They see that the duck is being prepared for cooking. Sitting by the window, the duck says she's had enough waiting to die. But the cow's perspective was different. She preferred to find happiness in everything and liked accepting things as they were. In real life, you might find fewer people who accept reality like the cow does. Most people's attitude towards life is like that of a duck. They refuse to accept reality and challenge it. But when there's no solution to the problem, what should a person do? Should they keep fighting or accept defeat? Instead of becoming disheartened or running away from reality, a better solution is one that you can own. And that solution is being present at the moment, that is, living this moment in the present. Accepting reality doesn't mean losing hope. It means seeing things as they are and focusing on the positive aspects of life. We shouldn't give up in the face of challenges, and we shouldn't be unhappy about things we don't like. The idea here is to accept facts, live in the present, and avoid negative self-talk to eliminate struggle from our lives. For example, suppose you're going to Florida for vacation and have booked a room in a hotel to enjoy a few days in between. However, since you arrived, it hasn't stopped raining. Now, how would you prefer to spend your holiday? Will you keep complaining about the weather, argue with hotel management for a refund, or get a little creative and enjoy your holiday in the rain? You can read books, watch movies, or enjoy the best available food. You can change, but to end, meaning you can achieve despite the situation. Instead of saying, I came to Florida to enjoy my holiday, but it hasn't stopped raining, you can say, I came to Florida to enjoy a few days of holiday, and it's raining here nowadays. When you accept reality, only then can you answer the question of where to go next and what possibilities you have. Accepting reality means removing your shoulds and focusing on what is. Focus on reality and see what you can do. Instead of getting angry at someone, accept what happened and move on. You should also avoid trying to control everything. Situations are neither good nor bad. We make them good or bad. We define what is good and bad, so everything is subjective, meaning it varies for each person. Instead of judging, when you look at things from an objective point of view, you'll find help in the world of possibilities. Acceptance also means non-avoidance. Sometimes, when our negative feelings run deep, we start blaming others or try to escape reality. We try to run away from things we can't handle. But this approach doesn't improve our capacity to deal with bad situations. Think of your emotions as muscles. The more you manage them, the stronger you become. Dealing with your anger or sadness now will make you feel better than trying to control them in the future. Accepting reality requires growth. You need to focus on what's happening rather than what should happen. If you study the facts, you might find several possible solutions. But if you waste time thinking about what should have happened, you'll end up on the negative path based on assumptions. The next chapter is giving way to passion. This world is filled with energy. To break free from our boundaries, we need to find a socket to gain strength and use the energy of life to create something beyond our limits. Feeling this type of energy is fair because our mind is accustomed to seeing familiar shapes. We have a habit of categorizing things, and these categories keep us from stepping out of struggles and limitations. That's why we need to find our passion to connect with the energy of life. Living with passion involves two steps. First, you must recognize everything that's holding you back and then accept things by breaking these barriers. Second, you must be ready to participate in new experiences in life. Our modern life has become organized and predictable. Every day, we follow the same routine to earn money and achieve success. But we need to break this routine. We need to surrender to nature and its forces. A few years ago, Rosemond was enjoying nature in England. She was presented with a beautiful view. It was a winter night, dark mountains were visible, and stars were shining in the sky. Even the river appeared deep black in the darkness. It was the winter season, but Rosemond felt as if spring was about to come. She could have gone to the city to have dinner at a fancy restaurant, but she didn't feel like leaving such a beautiful sight. Rosemond stood there, thinking that nature wanted to tell her something. Nature wanted her to participate in everything she had encountered, to play her part. When Rosemond returned home, she felt so powerful and passionate that she felt she could draw an emotional masterpiece on canvas, depicting the scenery she had painted, reflecting not only the image of nature but also her emotions expressed through colors. When we begin to resonate with the energy of life, we realize that we are part of an important pattern of life. 
We move forward with the need to stay alive and feel all the energy surrounding our existence. All we have to do is find an energy source and allow ourselves to be part of it. The next chapter is lighting spark in the Middle Ages. In the past, people kept a spark with them so that they could light a fire whenever needed. In today's world, we need to keep the spark of passion with us so that we can open doors to the world of possibilities for ourselves. When you inspire passion in others, they also participate happily, and together, they become part of something big. Influence others and be prepared to be influenced by them so that you can enter the world of creation. Imagine that everyone is inviting you to participate and be inspired, and in return, you are becoming a source of inspiration for others. When you catch the spark inside others and allow them to catch yours, the light of passion and creation spreads all over the world. Then, people have no fear of staying alive, and they can enjoy the world of possibilities without any limitations. The author of this book, Benjamin Zander, remembers that once his father took a late-night train. Benjamin asked his mother why his father went to meet someone so late when he could have called them. His mother explained that his father had gone to meet a friend for a business discussion. Later, when his father returned home, Benjamin asked why he had gone so far for a business meeting. His father replied that some things can only be decided when you meet in person. Benjamin was a child at that time, so he couldn't understand. Several years later, Benjamin was asked to conduct a tour for the New England Conservatory Orchestra. Event organizers suggested inviting the great cello player, Miss Slav Rostropovich, to the event. Benjamin called his assistant and asked if Miss Slav could play with the orchestra next April. The assistant informed him that Miss Slav was booked for the next three years and wouldn't be able to participate in the event. Benjamin asked if he could talk directly to Miss Slav. The assistant said she would be available at 10 a.m. the next morning. The next morning, Benjamin reached the airport and traveled from Boston to Washington to meet Miss Slav. When Silov's assistant saw that Benjamin had come directly to meet instead of calling, she was surprised and a little irritated. When they met, Silov remembered that he had taught Benjamin in a master class in Oxford. They started talking about Benjamin's best friend, who was a music genius. Then Benjamin asked Silov to perform his masterpiece with his friend. Remembering his friend, Silov's eyes started shining with passion. He was ready to perform his masterpiece, but he laid down a condition in front of Benjamin. He said they would rehearse only once before going on stage and would leave straight after the performance. After that, when Benjamin came out of the room, he told his assistant that Silov was ready to work with him. Hearing this, the assistant was even more surprised. After the meeting, when they were returning home, the flight attendant recognized Benjamin. She asked him if he had arrived today and was leaving so soon. She wondered what was so urgent that he had to return the same day. Benjamin reiterated his father's words to the flight attendant, stating that some things can only be decided through experience. When he talked about his best friend Asila, a spark ignited within her soul. Benjamin's words inspired her, so she decided to join the orchestra. Influence cannot be imposed, it must be earned by inviting people to participate in the passion of life. This is the next chapter in Frameworks for Possibility. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke in his, I have a dream speech, touching the hearts of all people, inspiring both black and white. He spoke of equality, opportunity, and freedom, expressing his dream of a good life, desired by all. He presented his vision to the world with full confidence. Nowadays, leaders face the challenge of standing against cutthroat competition and constantly evolving norms. Many leaders strive to appear tough and confident to their people. They must inspire courage and maintain a clear vision to become strong leaders. To inspire compassion and inspire others is what makes a great leader. Leaders teach people how to explore the world of possibility and avoid their limitations. It must be understood that limited resources are just a mindset and nothing more. Once we open our minds to the world of possibility, we can achieve anything. Instead of focusing on problems, a good leader should dispel fear by igniting passion and enjoyment. Some may argue that this concept is just an idea that cannot be applied in real-life struggles. Avoiding negativity and fear for survival is always challenging for leaders and others. The first step to overcoming this challenge is to have a clear framework of possibility. If you notice any limiting beliefs holding back your potential, try reframing them to offer more opportunities. Secondly, you must create your vision and live according to your framework of possibility. Keep reminding yourself of this new framework so that you don't revert to old patterns and limitations. Lily was a second grade girl who had to undergo chemotherapy and lost all her hair. When she returned to school, she wore a scarf on her head. But the kids in her class started teasing her, 
pulling off her scarf and making fun of her. She came home crying, and her mother told her not to pay attention to others' words and wait for her hair to grow back. The next day, when Lily returned to school, the kids teased her again. But when the teacher came into the class, Lily removed her scarf and showed her bald head. To support Lily, the teacher also shaved her head. Instead of mocking Lily, the teacher inspired the other kids. Some of them also expressed their desire to shave their heads. Thus, a new trend of being bald started in Lily's school, and all the kids who wanted to join this trend became Lily's friends. Here you can see how the teacher changed the framework of a negative thing and turned it into a positive one, inspiring a behavior change. When the framework changed, everyone's behavior in the class changed too. Therefore, changing your reality's framework will help you live a better life. Whatever you want to achieve, whatever problems you are trying to solve, it all starts by creating a different framework and living according to its vision. And now, the moment we call conclusion, where we recap what we've learned from these chapters, anything is possible. This is the main lesson of this summary. The authors, Rosman Stone Gender and Benjamin Gender, aim to help you go into a world where nothing is impossible and all your dreams can come true. So, the first lesson you've learned is that by changing the stories you tell yourself daily, you can create any result. We're living based on a fixed set of beliefs that need to be questioned. More freedom and creativity in life can challenge any limiting belief. Second, you learn that to live in a world full of possibilities, you need to face your limitations. Third, you learn to understand life as a combination of many games. When facing challenges, you realize how you can improve and grow. Don't focus too much on obstacles or hurdles, but enjoy solving life like a puzzle. Fourth, always evaluate situations based on real facts. Don't let your personal biases ruin your mood. Accept things as they are and try to find solutions. Fifth, find your passion, reconnect with nature, and let life's energy flow through you, filling you with joy and creativity. Sixth, when you inspire others to find their passion, they too will discover their purpose and how they can contribute to life. Finally, to overcome your limitations, you must recognize and reframe your limiting beliefs. By changing your negative aspects, you can achieve your unlimited potential and live with unlimited opportunities. So, which point did you like the most in this summary? Which point was a light bulb moment for you? Let us know in the comments section along with your name.